before you forget, all right, before I forget to tell you, still looking at the second coming and the last days, but if you want to read Revelation chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9 <coughs> before next week, it'll help you. All right, Revelation chapter 6, 7, and 9. If you want to read that between now and next Wednesday, then you may be enlightened a little bit when we get there next week, all right? Well, that's where a lot of it will come from. Revelation chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now, we're looking at the last days of Satan coming. Now, we're not nowhere near the end of this, all right? We're going to have, I don't know, there will be six or eight weeks left at least. Maybe more than that. We're going to go right on in through spring. Uh, we're going to finish this out. Uh, we're going to go at a pace that we can grasp it, all right, because I think it's important that we see what's going on, all right? And uh, we're no theologian by no means, but the Bible is simple if you just read it, all right? And uh, if you pay attention and read it, it'll, it'll tell itself, all right? And we try to ask God to give us wisdom, an understanding of this book uh, that I can tell of it, all right? It's not for me to know. It's for me to be able to know and tell, all right? Nothing's just to know. It's to know and tell, okay? And it's not a private interpretation, no. All right, it's what God has said. All right, everybody all right? Let's pray, and uh, then let's go right into our study. Father, I need you tonight, if you would, to... Look inside of my mind and heart, remove anything that would be like sin. I don't want to come into your presence because you're so holy and great and, and faithful and wonderful, powerful. You're everything. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. No Savior. There's no Creator. There's nobody like you. You're the only one. And yeah. We love you tonight. And Lord, I don't want to come into your presence with dirty hands. Lord, I think so often. He had come, you must come with clean hands and a pure heart. I pray tonight that anything that would resemble sin, you set it aside. That you might give me fresh oil tonight of the Holy Spirit. That you might help me to teach. Open up the Word of God, not just to me, but to everybody that listens. For those that listen on the computer and, and the call, we've been getting calls of people questioning and wanting to know. God, I pray that tonight that uh, there'll be things that'll... Uh, come in our heart and our mind that will change us. If nothing else, to want to be a soul winner as we see the seriousness of the hour. Father, we look forward to seeing you. Look forward to leaving this old flesh of a sin and coming to a place that's holy without sin. I can't wait God, to quit sinning, God. I break your heart constantly. So, Lord, help me tonight to draw closer to you in a place that I don't want to sin that I don't have a desire to do wrong, that I'll master this flesh, and I'll thank you and pray you. Anoint me afresh tonight, God. Give me power, I pray, in Jesus' name, and amen. All right, we're in the last days. We looked last week at coming up as a review, really, a major review last week, and we ended up there on the tribulation period. But right now, let's look at a couple of headlines. Man, there's a lot going on in the world uh, since last Wednesday. I could not write it all. I almost give a whole lesson just on news clippings and let's go home. That's how many they was. So I had to pick out just four or five ones that will, will uh, maybe intrigue you just a little bit. But I want you to remember, it's time. It's closer now than it was yesterday. It's closer now than it was Sunday. You believe Jesus is coming? Amen. You believe he's coming? Amen. Who did you talk to about him this week? Had three days. You talked to anybody about Jesus? Already had three days. Huh? Think about it. The latest right here it says, the latest Iran's president, Pope Francis, exchanges gifts. Him and Iran's president. That was last week. We, did, we mentioned that in passing. Iran's president and Pope Francis have exchanged gifts and wishes for hope and prayers after they met privately at the Vatican. You say, why is that important? Because you've got the largest religious group giving gifts back and forth with the largest or the richest religious group. All right? Muslims and Catholics. All right? North Korea. This is uh, Monday. North Korea and Russia kept clo keep close ties 
Japan-based outlet said. Now listen to this. A pro-North Korean news outlet in Japan warned the United States, this is what they said, of its hostile policy against Pyongyang. Now that's that feller in North Korea, the crazy. Amen. In case you need to know who that is. While pointing out friendly relations between Russia and North Korea has turned a the corner. They're, they're getting more buddy-buddy. And Japan's telling us to keep our nose out of North Korea's business. Now, this was 19 hours ago. Now, that is about a five-hour-old five news thing. I went back and put this on the scene. The Russians are going to have a cow, is what the news people said. The U.S. latest message to Putin is a really big deal. Countries belonging to the NATO alliance in Central and Eastern Europe will apparently receive heavy weaponry, tanks, and other equipment from the U.S., which quadrupled its budget from $789 million to more than $3.4 billion for military spending in Europe through 2017. That's us sending stuff over there. You don't see that in your Beckley paper or Charleston Gazette. Okay? But that's, that's what the news says. Japan military on alert. All right? This is five hours ago. So now it's about eight hours ago. All right? North Korea is getting ready to launch a rocket. Japan put its military on alert. They don't know where they're going to put it. Even though Japan's taking up for it, they don't know where they're going to bomb it or what Korea. That's how nutty that feller is in Korea. Okay? In North Korea. South Korea warned that if the North is going to pay a severe price, there's trouble brewing. Everybody understand that? That's what's happening. Hey, Paul, the hand move. Huh? Amen. The hand move. I finally found one, the hand move. Now I think it's almost a second. I found another. You wait till we get close to the end of it. Huh? I found another today. All right? We're close time. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Now let's look at the tribulation period, okay? Now I could give you a whole lot of headlines, but I didn't want to take the time. If you want to learn something, you know, if you got a computer, get on a computer and look up other news other than what you hear on the TV. All right? It'll help you, and you'll probably get aggravated. All right. Daniel 12, 1. Now, we're talking about the tribulation period. Let's go back for a moment. The tribulation period is a earthly thing. It happens on this earth. All right? The church is not here. The Christians are gone. The rapture is taking place. We're at the judgment seat of Christ. While we're there, there's judgment here upon this earth. This judgment is for the people left on this earth, and there is no one left on the earth but lost people. That's all that's left. The saved are gone. The dead in Christ is, has done gone. The Old Testament saints have been there. The graves done burst open. Everybody's with the Lord, okay? And the people that's left, millions and billions of people, are left on the earth lost people. Yeah. All right? Everybody with me? <coughs> now, Daniel says, At that time shall Michael stand up. He's the archangel. The great prince will stand for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble, speaking of the tribulation, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book. The purpose of this time, now I've got to go back and get your mind on this so you'll understand this. I want to make sure you get this, that the time, the purpose of this time is a judgment upon the Jew. That's the main purpose, okay? God oversees this, but he'll use Antichrist to perform this judgment. Now, that Antichrist name's there, but that is not in the Bible concerning the beast. The only time Antichrist is in your Bible is in uh, Little John, and it's mentioned twice, and it has nothing to do with the beast and the false prophet. Just so you know. Okay? Since this time it is judgment for the Jew, it proves even more that the church will not be here because it's a time of judgment for the Jew. <coughs> now, the reason I want to keep reiterating that is because these people think that the church is still going to be here. You've got all millennialists and, and pre-trib and post-trib and all these names they've given to us. It's what people understand. If you're saved, you ain't going to be here. And if you're here, it's because you ain't saved. Now, understand that, okay? 
The church is being judged. The judgment seat of Christ is judged on the Jews. will be none of our business. We're not going to be here. We ain't got a hand in it. Now, the reason for this judgment is why? Now, the Jews rejected God the Father. Now, they done this in Samuel's day, but they done it all the way back in Moses' day. They done it all the way back in Noah's day. They done it back in Adam's day. Okay? But it was very plain they said it as much in Samuel's day. Okay? And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected me, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. People have always had a trouble of God reigning over them. The church has a trouble with Christ reigning over them. And the Jew has trouble with man, with God reigning over them. But we'll let a man do it. That's what I don't understand. How come we're like that, all right? The Jew rejected God the Son in Christ's day. He came unto his own, John 1, 11, and his own received him not. In Luke 23, 18, and they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, release him to us, Barabbas. But they chose another instead of Christ, in Christ's day. Here rejecting God again. The Jew rejected God the Holy Spirit in Stephen's day. All right, Acts 7, 51. You stiff, naked, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you'd always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. For this reason, they're in trouble, must be dealt with as children going to listen. There was a question brought to me last week uh, about this. Now, the Jews are not children of God. They're dealt with as a child. As the father pitieth his child, it says in Psalms. Are you hearing me? Then he has pity and he disciplines the child. Now, it's not that all of the Jews are children of God. They're actually the wife of God, the Jewish people are. Everybody follow me? But they're disciplined or judged as a father would a child. That's what I meant by that. Is everybody all right? Amen. Everybody understand? Okay. Ezekiel 20, 33 and 38. Now this goes about with the series on the 23rd Psalm about thy rod and thy staff. They cover me. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people, gather you out of the country, bring you your scatter with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, with fury poured out, it says, and I will bring you to the winners of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, see, all the way back to Moses, okay? So will I plead with you, saith the Lord. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. There we have that discipline. Like thy rod and thy staff, they come to me. As we looked at the 23rd Psalm, he uses that rod. It's a discipline. It's a judgment, okay? Everybody understand? Everybody with me? Talk to me. Amen. I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that trespass against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. They shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. All right? Now, let's go back. The tribulation period was mentioned all the way back in Deuteronomy. It is not just a revelation book or just a Daniel thing or an Isaiah or a Jeremiah thing. We go all the way back to Deuteronomy chapter 4. It says, when thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even when? Who would have thought that was mentioned in Deuteronomy? Speaking of the latter days. All right? It's still a prophecy yet to come. Even he's, God is trying to line out the children of Israel. He's always been trying to line out us or the children of Israel. We okay with that? If thou turn to the Lord thy God, it shall be obedient to his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swore unto them. <clears throat> Jeremiah 30, verse 7. This is speaking of the tribulation period now. Think about the seriousness of this time. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, Israel, who was called Israel, okay? This is judgment on the Jew. Everybody follow me. We're trying to give you the scripture showing the purpose and who's included or who's the important figure here. Understand this. Israel is always in front according to God. The Bible says in Romans, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to the Jew first. And also to the Greek. The Jew has always been top notch with God. Everybody understand that? 
Why? We told you, what, four weeks ago. Because of the faith of one man. Because of the faith of Abraham. There's nobody had any faith like Abraham had that he believed God fully without question. Okay? He, he followed him. And because of that strict obedience, then God said, all right, then I'll make you a nation. Right? Wonder what he'd do for our people if we fall. Okay. Jeremiah says, now last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. There's not a time. All right? Nowhere. There's no comparison to it. Joel says this. Alas, there it is again. For the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. And as a destruction from the who? Almighty. From the Almighty shall it come. God is the one. Everybody understand it? Joel chapter 2 then says it. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. No time going to compare to what's going to take place the seven years of the tribulation period. There's three and a half years of horrible time, and then there's a three and a half years of ten times horrible time. I mean, it's bad, and then it gets worse, okay? You've not seen nothing like it. You can't imagine nothing like it. We've never read nothing like it. There's not been no Holocaust uh, in Hitler's time that compares to them. There's not been no genocide in Bosnia or in Iraq. It's even close to it. There's been no eradication of the American Indian that's even close to it. There's been no hurt that we can ever have ever thought about seeing like it's going to happen in that time upon this earth after Jesus comes and takes us home, what's left here is going to be worse than we can imagine. Okay? Matthew 24 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, if he would just let it go, nobody would make it, he said. There wouldn't be nobody come to it. It's going to be that rough that there wouldn't be no one, one person ever make it through. All right? But we know there'll be a rip. He said those days should be short. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, that's Israel. All right? That's not us. We're not here. Okay? Those days shall be short. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 says it. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and they, what? How much? Think about it. Revelation chapter 6, 15 through 17. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the day, great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Think about that. Great wrath. It's great wrath. Oh, I'm glad, though, when I believed on the Lord that I was saved from the wrath to come, justified by his blood, I'm saved from the wrath to come. Think about that. That's what salvation is. That's what redemption is. I ain't going there. Hey, I'm going up there with him. He's coming. I'm going. And it's going to be worse than we can imagine here. Amen. All right? Now, look at these words. That's you. What we've read, all the scripture we just read. <clears throat> wrath, judgment, indignation, trouble, destruction, darkness, trial, desolation, overturn, punishment. That's all the words. Now, you lost here tonight. If Jesus if Jesus come this that fast, eleven hundred eleven, uh, what is it, eleven hundredths of a second, he'll come that fast then that's what you're going to be going through. Are you hearing me? 
Now think about this. All of our people that are lost, all of our lost friends, all of our lost loved ones, that's why we ought to be on our face begging God to give them another opportunity. Why our pillow ought to be wet at night. Why there ought never be a church service that tears don't run down our face where we've not begged God for our people that's lost. Why we ought to take every opportunity we have. The lost people you meet, you don't have to know their name. God knows who they are. But they still need the gospel. Right. Yeah. Because they're going to go through this. Are you hearing me? It's that bad. It's that bad. I understand this important fact. This time is not the wrath of men or the wrath of Satan. The tribulation period is not a time of the wrath of Satan. Right. Okay? <coughs> Satan is not in charge right. during the tribulation period. Satan is the one that's feeding the beast in a false problem, yes. But he's not in charge. He's never been in charge. He will never be in charge. All power, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Okay? He said, but the wrath of an almighty God, that's what's going to happen. Now he's going to use men, he's going to use Satan, and whatever means he wants, but he is in charge completely. I don't want you to think any other thing. Remember that. That's important as we look through this. We okay? Now, Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Say with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now look up first the thought. Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of whose judgment? His, His judgment. Now, now let's get into this now. The first purpose of this time, now we told you it was because it was judgment of the Jews and all of that. But the first purpose of this time is to prepare Israel for the Messiah. Not a Savior, not as we know a Savior, but preparing Him for Jesus to come. All right. If you read your, in, the, in the Gospels, they kept saying, uh, the woman at the well, we know Messiah come. How many times do you say, we know Messiah come? Yeah. We set up a kingdom. Well, go about, will you come and set up your kingdom now? All right, that's what was asked all the time. They knew the Old Testament prophecies, but they missed the cross. Right. Okay? So the first purpose of this time is to prepare Israel for the Messiah to bring about the conversion of a multitude of Jews who will enter to the kingdom age here on earth. See, there's going to be a kingdom age here on earth for 1,000 years. We'll get to that later on. But there will be an earthly kingdom set up on this earth. Not a new earth. Not yet. But there'll be an earthly kingdom set up on this earth. Now, like it is. For 1,000 years. The new earth don't come until after the white throne judgment and everything's done and God burns their off and there's never a sin scar saw. Yeah. But this earthly kingdom is set up on this earth for a 1,000 years. That's what the book says. Now, behold, thou shalt conceive, Luke 1, 31, 39, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. That's the birth of Jesus, right? Look what it says in verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God shall do what? Give him a throne of his father. He's in the lineage of David, who was king of Israel. There's going to be a throne set up in Israel. And David ain't going to sit on it. Jesus is going to sit on it. Amen. For a thousand years. And he's going to rule and he's going to reign. And God's going to see to it that his divine plan is, is done regardless of what people think. He's got the last say. You say, well, where are we at? Well, we'll get to all that later. Just remember, you're with Jesus if you're saved. And if you're not saved, then you're going to burn. 
Yeah. Think about that. <coughs> Malachi 4, 5 and 6 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Now this is for the Jew now. Behold, the coming of the great and dreadful day, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their father, lest I come and smite the earth with a curve. All right? Are we all right? Are we okay? Yes. Now, also, this time, now the primary meaning of this time, the primary purpose of this tribulation period is again the Jew, or for the Jew. It should, shouldn't say against the Jew. It's actually for the Jew to purge him. Yeah. Okay? But there's also another purpose. The primary purpose is for the Jew, but the secondary purpose then, the Scripture says, to pour out wrath on unbelieving man and the nation. The Scripture backs this up. We'll give it to you here. People think that only hell is their punishment. That's not true. Right. Huh? There's going to be a lot goes on before they ever go to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 26, 21 says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. Now think about it. The Lord's coming out of his place. Yeah. What's he going to do? He's going to punish the inhabitants of where? The earth. For what? <laughs> He's going to punish the people on the earth because of their sin. Right? That's what it says, ain't it? The earth also shall enclose her blood and shall be no more, and shall no more cover her slain. First Thessalonians 2 12 says, That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Where they have pleasure at? Unrighteousness. He's going to judge the world, the men, the unbelieving, and the nations because they love their sin. Now, God is going to use a man. Now we're coming up to the end of this tonight. I can't give you but so much at a time. I can, but I don't, I don't think be why. Now God is going to use a man, the beast. Now, the world calls him, or we call him in religious realm, the Antichrist. Like, but like I told you a while ago, that's not in the Bible. Antichrist is only mentioned twice. I'll tell you again over, over in... Uh, Let's see what first John and second John? Maybe third John. It's in, the, it's in the little Johns. But that's the only time that Antichrist is mentioned. Okay? Now there's false Christ mentioned. But Antichrist is not mentioned at them times, and it's not concerning this man here. We okay? Mm -hmm. Now I know that's not what's always taught us, but we're going to try to stay with Bible terminology. Okay? Now, God is going to use a man, the beast. That's what he's called in Revelation, the beast. The man of sin in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's who he's going to start to start, use to start all this. Now, the identity of this man is not given. All right? His name is not given. Although, the Bible says, and we're going to get to all this. I'll give you more scripture later on because there's too much to give you tonight. I'd have to give you 50 verses to back all this up for you to understand it. And I don't think you want to you want to sit here for another hour. Some of you would, but some of you wouldn't. All right? Now listen. The, the beast is going to be a Gentile. Now how do I know he's going to be a Gentile? Because the Bible says that he rises out of the sea. That don't mean he's a sea monster. But it's the sea of people. That's Bible terminology. Okay? Or Gentile nations. That's where the Antichrist arises out of. Alright? Now he arises from the Roman Empire. Everybody look this way. The Roman Empire, the Roman Empire is not dissolved. It never has been. We've not had Roman rule. There's not been a Roman emperor. But all of its policies, all of its uh, practices, all of its things is still prevalent. Now the Roman Empire included Europe, the old Ottoman Empire. Now listen carefully to me now. Spain, all up through England. Okay? 
This is in Bible day. Where did our people come from? Europe, Europe. England. Who we fight our independence for? England. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. You know what they was part of? The Roman Empire. You know what Canada is? French settled. Part of the Roman Empire. You know what Mexico is? And some Central America and South America. We're still part of the Roman Empire. Okay? Now, we don't have a Roman emperor. We don't have a Caesar. But we have all the policies and practices that went on during the Roman Empire. Everybody okay? Amen. That's where you'll find the United States in prophecy. Is with the Roman Empire. That's the only way you'll ever find the United States in prophecy. Okay? Everybody all right? Amen. Now, this beast, all right, this man of sin, as Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, all right, does not have to be in America. America has tried to monopolize everything about the Bible. They've tried to take the Bible, all right, and only an English King James Bible is the Word of God. Okay, it wasn't the Word of God before it was translated in English, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. Huh? We've tried to make Jesus America. We've tried to make salvation America. You ain't saved like, like Grandpa was up the holler. Without no shoes and big tool of mockery in his mouth. And, I mean, we've tried to Americanize everything. About church. About our worship. About our music. I'm just telling you. The man of sin may not be American. All right, we're okay. Amen. He rises from the Roman Empire. He is the head of the last form of Gentile world rule. He will be a political leader from what Revelation teaches. He's going to have the ear of all the people all around the world. He's going to be a, he's going to be a doozy. Huh? If he's a politician, we know he's going to be a doozy. Right? Amen. I know who it's not. Okay? Now the reason that's up there is because they used to be taught. Yeah. Yeah. Used to, they used to teach in our churches, in our country churches, that Adolf Hitler was the Antichrist. And since he committed suicide and blew up a building, nobody really knows where he's at because he hated the Jew, and that's who's going to be the Antichrist. And then when they shot John F. Kennedy in the head, they said, well, now the Antichrist is going to have a head wound and be resurrected from the dead. The Bible does not say that. <laughs> and they used to say it was John F. Kennedy. He was a Catholic and the great war. And I mean, that's, that's for people. Who, they used to be taught in our county surrounding this church. I do know it ain't them. I don't know who it is, but I know who it ain't. It ain't me and it ain't them. <laughs> like me yet. Say so Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, is, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, and when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what, behold, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That's speaking of the Holy Spirit right now. For the mystery of iniquity hath already worked. Only he who now letteth will let. He'll be taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit is the only restraining force of the man of sin right now. For the mystery of iniquity already works. There's already sin everywhere. And without the Holy Spirit holding sin back, sin would be rampant more than we ever yeah. could imagine. Right. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume 
And that wicked is that beast, okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now that's at the end of the second advent of his coming, but he comes in his glory. That's in several lessons down the road. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Even him whose work is coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. He's a politician. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. Power, signs, and lying wonders. He's a politician for sure, right there. That's proof right there. We okay? Mm -hmm. And I saw, this is why I want you to read Revelation. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that said, on have a bow. And a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That is not Jesus. That is not Jesus. Used to be taught that was Jesus. Don't know why. That is not Jesus. Well, he's coming to conquer. Huh? Jesus ain't coming to conquer. He's coming to set things right. Amen. Huh? We okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it's time. It's time. And we want to stop right there coming up to about the Antichrist, as we call him. All right? And we'll try to, try to stay away from that term. Call him the beast. The beast out of the sea, the Bible says. Okay? Man of sin. Now, what y'all look back up here on the screen? We'll make you mad. All right. We wonder about our country. Why our country's in shape? How many here is upset because our country's in a bad shape? All right. Let me show you why our country's going down here. Turn it right quick. I told you last week I was going to show you some things that made me boss. I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. It really don't matter to me. What's your? All right. Let me show you something. That'll make you sick. Well, made me mad. It may make you sick. And I would have got sick if I hadn't been so mad. <laughs> the Muslim Brotherhood infiltrates the Obama ministry. I never voted for him either time. Okay? Now these, and, and I can't understand any Christian that ever did. And that's just the way it is. Right, here's your first. Now this is this is in his administration. This is who works in his administration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Just so you know. I don't know how you say these names. Avery hey, Fallican. Lick a hand or something. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> you know what he is? He's a devout Muslim. <coughs> Assistant Secretary for Policy Development for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Huh? Amen. Y'all hearing me? Amen. Now, I'm going to say something, and maybe I shouldn't, I'm going to say it anyway. If Satan would run on a Democratic ticket, they'd be people who vote for him. Yeah. 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 Mohammed Elberry. 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 Look who he is. Homeland Security Advisor. He appeared at the conference honoring uh, Ayatollah Khomeini. Wow. Has made a tax on prosecution of terrorist fundraisers. Has actively promoted jihadist ideology godfather Syed Quinn. <laughs> and threatened the Dallas Morning News journalist who repeatedly exposed the extremist view. That's who's in the administration. How about Rashid Hussein? Special envoy to the organization of the Islamic Conference. He's a half is. I know how you say these words. Of the Quran. An individual earns his this this uh, I can't even say that word. Designation by committing to memory the Quran in its entirety. And enjoys high status among Shire inherited Muslims who regard this feat as proof of a deep devotion, devotion to Allah. He's headquartered in Jihad, Saudi Arabia. He's dedicated in, in his documents to spread the Islamic law or the Shari'a law. That's who's in the administration. Okay? Be not a cardinal in the Salam al Mariyadi. Huh? I can't speak. Islam. Uh, Obama advisor, founder of Muslim Public Affairs Council, 
and its current executive director, and a Muslim leader who said that Israel should have been added to the suspect list for the 9-11. Okay. <coughs> How about Imam Muhammad Magid, Obama Sharin Saar, President of the Islamic Society of North America. Magid was born and raised in Sudan, immigrated to the United States. All right, studied with his father, Al Haji Maji Haji Modi. Uh, described by one lost old website as a Cairo trained Muslim Brotherhood scholar. Right? That's who's in the administration. Ibu yeah. Patel, Advisory Council on Faith-Based Neighborhood Partnerships. How's that? Huh? Muslims. Yeah. Okay? It's time. It's time. And I just have to say this. If... If we didn't catch it when we heard that a man by the name of Barack Hussein Obama was running for president, we probably ain't never going to catch him. Uh, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Just thought I'd mention. You're right. That's not because he's a Democrat, it's because I'm an American and he's a Muslim. Hey, hey, hey. hey.